Sarah Backhouse. I'm now joined by Laura Ibsen of Cisco. Welcome, Laura. Hi, Sarah. Thank you. Yes. Tell me about your position because you wear quite a few hats. Well, I have two hats right now. I've been heading up global policy and government affairs and working on green advocacy and policy for the past 12 years at Cisco. And I have a new job, which is the senior vice president and general manager of Smart Grid. So taking what we learned in the internet and figuring out how do we make the electricity grid smart, make it more efficient and dynamic. Well, let's explore Smart Grid first because that's a really topical issue right now. Give me an overview of how that will work. Well, I don't know if anybody knows exactly how it will work today, but for Cisco, it's about architecting an end-to-end uh, communications network so that we can move watts as efficiently as we've moved data and bits over the internet. So it's about making your home smart, making that last mile of communications from the substation um, out smart, and making the distribution uh, very relevant to the world of renewables. So it's really integrating everything from the distribution all the way down to the fingertips in your home that will control the power that you use. What's the biggest challenge in seeing this become a reality? You know, I think it's about the private sector and public sector sector working together. I think it's about making innovation a priority and thinking about creative out-of-the-box ideas, taking things that we're doing on pilots that have been started with the Smart Grid stimulus funding and making those pilots actually um, large production types of opportunities for the grid. Let's go on to your second hat, okay. <laughs> which is uh, that of sustainability within your company. Right, right. What kind of initiatives are you working on there? Well, at Cisco, we started with a, an eco board, which is a collaborative uh, group of executives across the company to align what we do around green, from how we measure our own carbon footprint and setting a very ambitious goal, 25% absolute reduction by 2012, to making sure our products are efficient, removing hazardous materials, and developing solutions like telepresence and teleworking and using uh, WebEx communications so that we don't travel to everything that we need to do to make it more efficient and think out of the box about how we can all be more green. 25% by 2012, that's yes. ambitious, but that's great. Is that, uh, do you think that's achievable? Well, we're already meeting that goal, so we're going to have to readjust and reset, but we want to make sure that the, the, the solutions that we bring, whether it's the building management systems to make buildings smarter, they're actually 70% of the total carbon emissions are from buildings and our homes. We want to make sure that we use those solutions in what we do and then provide those as best practices and examples to all of our customers, whether that's in the grid or in people's homes, large enterprises and governments. Now obviously your business, so by meeting those reductions, I presume you're saving money, so it's a win-win? It's great. It's about cost cutting. I, uh, the numbers on telepresence is that we've saved uh, about, uh, we've cut our travel 50%, saved $320 million and taken 31,000 cars off the road. That's wonderful. If that's the reality that a big business like you can make, uh, you know, lose carbon and also save money, right. why is there a disconnect? Why is it so hard for this concept to go mainstream? Well, I think the innovative solutions are just coming on board. It's about sharing best practices and collaborating and, and saying, how do we scale these? And the governor was mentioning today, it's about what are the incentives to do this? Making sure that we're focused on incentives, not uh, discouraging people or, or broadcasting negativity, but saying there are incentives to do this. California has been leading the way, uh, whether it's in tax credits for solar, and being really creative about creating a, a, uh, an effect for people to invest in these new technologies. And finally, why was it important that you attend the Governor's Global Climate Summit? Well, number one, we're proud of California. We are a global company, but we're a California-based company with over 67,000 employees. I think it sends a message when we're here to support not only what this governor is doing, but the country and the world, having people like Tony Blair here. We want to make sure that we're playing a leadership role, that we're talking about green, that we, we, we broadcast how we're giving back, but then we talk about the technologies that can make a difference across both the public and the private sectors. Well, Laura, thank you so much thank for your you. time today and your ongoing efforts. Nice to meet you. Thanks. Thanks.